My name is uh, Andrew Good. I am uh, uh, I work on the registry team at uh, NPM, which is a great honor. And uh, today we're just going to be talking a little bit about um, something that's uh, a little near and dear to my heart, which is helping to make releases easier using NPM. This is almost a talk that uh, just piggybacks off of what uh, Steve did earlier. So um, I really appreciate his talk. So. Uh, also, just a little disclaimer, uh, this presentation is a little bit of the product of um, when you uh, are up till about 3 a.m. the night before, you're supposed to be giving a talk and uh, <laughs> trying to figure out what you're going to say. Um, anywho, it's basically a dialogue between me and my alter ego. <laughs> All right, so alter ego, we're going to be automating some of our for fun and profit. Fun? Fun, you say? OK. Well, sure, because open source is fun. Anybody that doesn't uh, actively work on open source projects, I highly encourage you to do so. Um, uh, it can be uh, tough sometimes, but I think it is highly rewarding. And profit, you say? Hmm, how does that work? Well, kind of. So, the message also applies to your day job. So um, anybody that uh, regularly uses NPM uh, or regularly works with packages um, and needs to publish those packages, this message is for you. OK, you got me. I'm listening. How do I automate Simver? Good question. I can answer it with three words, structured, commit, messages. OK, OK, OK. Hold on. I know I just lost most of you in the room. Uh, structure commit messages, that means more work. And kind of invades on my creative space here. Come on, these commit messages are mine. OK, OK. Let's just bear with me for a second. Let's go over uh, what exactly I mean by this. Um, we're going to do the lazy man's version of structure commit messages. And it still works. So what does that mean? First of all, we're going to defer the structure in the commit messages until they're absolutely necessary, which happens to be when you're just about to merge your change into your master branch. So here's the idea behind that. Um, the, the normal workflow right, is uh, you can still stick with your witty everyday commit messages. Here are a couple examples. Lock S foils in attack position. <laughs> Late evenings, revert commit if, yeah. So, uh, so you, you still get your, your same witty commit messages. You push your changes uh, up to uh, GitHub or what have you. You open your PR, you do a review. Maybe there's some back and forth between uh, things are not quite right, uh, you need to make some more changes, that's fine. Notice we haven't done anything out of the ordinary yet. Right? This, should be, this should sound familiar, these steps so far. So we're now to the point where we have reviewed change. It looks good. We're ready to merge it in and make it an official part of the code base. So this is where we have deferred our structure until this point in time. So what do we do? Two key things. We're going to use, if uh, GitHub I don't know if you heard recently, uh, but in the past couple months, several months actually now, GitHub added this cool feature to their UI uh, so that you can have this option with how you want to do your merge when you're merging a change uh, from a feature branch to your uh, main development branch. Um, typically, you would always have to do just a standard Git merge, right? And as everybody knows, that means you're actually adding uh, a, a new commit on top of the existing commit history. Right? So you're keeping all of the existing uh, commits and just adding one on top of it to get back to the, the branch that you want it to be in. Uh, the squash and merge feature, though, is pretty cool because 
uh, this allows us to basically scrap the histories of the feature branch, squash it all down into a single commit message with a reference to the PR um, uh, that we are merging. And do, in doing so, we can easily throw in our structure into the commit message at the very last second. And so my second point, if you still need convincing, is that structure is actually really easy. Again, we're doing a, my version of, of structure, which is the, uh, easily the lazy man's version. So what that means is you basically, all you have to do is, if this is a, a new feature that you're adding to your project, you just prepend uh, feet to the beginning of the commit message, the one that we're going to be squashing and merging. If it's a bug fix, just append a uh, fix. Uh, the only other thing that really matters is if it's a breaking change. Um, if it's a breaking change, just include the words breaking change somewhere in the commit message. Uh, typically, this would be like in the main body. Where we'd want to have a little bit of explanation. But again, we're being lazy, so we're just going to throw this in like at the tail. And by the way, um, for those that don't know, these are, what, these are uh, commit message conventions that were developed by the Angular uh, project. Um, and so I'm just kind of adopting these as, uh, uh, as, a, as a good practice. So here is an example, right? Uh, I have um, this feature that I've developed. Um, I'm applying, I, I want to apply uh, my uh, env configuration globally. So uh, I've, you can see I've got my green button here that says confirm, squash, and merge, if you can see that against the white background. And uh, I just appended a prepended feature to my commit message. Easy peasy. That's it. OK, OK, OK. So, so what? Uh, I thought we were talking about automating things here. I, so far, I haven't seen any automation. All I've seen is some extra work. Uh, OK, good question. So uh, I want to introduce you to this simple little CLI tool um, it's called standard version. Uh, basically, what it allows you to do is uh, before, when you were ready to cut a release uh, for your project and your package that you plan to publish uh, to one or more registries, um, kind of your best version, your, your best option was to use the npm version command, and you had then you had to you had to give it an argument, right? You had to specify something for npm version. You can specify that, hey, I want this to be a patch, or I want this to be a minor bump or the major bump, or you can just specify the actual version that you want it to be. Um, and that's kind of best case scenario, right? Uh, is using the CLI to do this for you, which will automatically create uh, a git tag um, in your git repository as well. Um, now, even before, even before you knew about this command, you know, perhaps you're just editing package.json by hand. Um, we're looking for a, a better system here, right? So one of the problems with this, um, in my opinion, is uh, at the time at which you're ready to release your project to, to publish a new version, um, this may be uh, days, weeks, months after you've accumulated some, uh, some things that you've, uh, some changes that have been made to the project. And so now that you're ready to cut a release, I got to go back and actually think about what changes have been made uh, after they've been made? Uh, what if I don't remember? Uh, I got to go back and look at the commit history, or I got to go back and uh, review the PRs that were merged? Again, we're wasting time here. So um, what standard version allows you to do, now that we have structured commit messages, uh, all I have to do is run standard version. Uh, and I don't have to think about the version bump at all, right? Um, which is much better because now uh, I don't have to think about, I don't have to worry about what changes were made at the time that I'm ready to publish. Um, I already made the, the tough decisions um, previously. Uh, so at this point, no thought is required, right? I just have a single command, and it's going to do all the nice things that NPM version does for you um, uh, already, which is 
bump the version in your package.json file, uh, commit that change to your master branch, uh, go ahead and create a tag for the new version, um, just like NPM version, the standard NPM version command. Only this time, no thought is required. Um, and this is also beneficial, right, because the, the, when you made the changes, you, you, what you don't realize, possibly, is that you already made the decisions for what your next version was going to be when you were doing your merge. Um, when the changes were still fresh on your mind, right? When they actually, uh, you had some cognitive uh, recollection of what, what the changes were. So, when it's time to cut a release, you let the, get, you let the commit history speak for itself. Um, and so, my alter ego's thinking, hmm, wait, that's, seriously, that's all there is to it? Actually, it gets even better. If you call within the next 23 and a half minutes, we'll throw in a change log for free. So, uh, so yes. So what that means is you not only get automatic version bumping, don't have to think about it, you also get a, a nice change log. And for anybody that's maintained an open source project and manually maintains a change log, um, it can be frustrating, right? It can be difficult. You can spend valuable time and effort um, copying, basically copying your PR list over to your change log and making sure you get all the references right, um, uh, make sure you have some notes in there and, and give credit to uh, the people that uh, were contributing to your project. Well, now you don't have to worry about that. You get that for free. So this is an example change log created by uh, standard version. Right, so again, my point is, you did the hard work up front when you, when you actually start using structured commit messages, and you're letting the commit history do the work for you, right? No more manual change logs, this is cool. So, yeah, that sounds good, I like the sound of that. So what was, what was that tool again? I, sorry, I, was, I fell asleep there for a second. Uh, standard version, right? So uh, we're kind of piggybacking off of the, the standard name, which is a, a, a code blunter. Um, and we, are, we, uh, we checked with, uh, with Ferris. Um, he gave us the go ahead to, to use the standard name. Um, and so if you want to use it, it's really easy, right? You can install it as a, as a, as a dev dependency in your project if you want to Make sure if, if, that your project is, is, is more portable. You don't have to worry about people setting up uh, things in their global environment um, to develop on your project. Um, sure, no problem. Install it as a dev dependency, add, a, add an NPM run script, um, and just kind of the standard thing that we've been using so far is, is a release command. So uh, what that looks like is uh, NPM run release when you're ready to cut a release. That's it. Um, or if you... Uh, want to keep uh, an extra dev dependency out of your project, you can just store, uh, install it as a global bin uh, with npmi-g and uh, just run it uh, using a CLI. Easy peasy. So, um, so that's basically it, right? Uh, leveraging the power, it's just a simple little automation, right? Just to spare you a little bit of cycles because as everyone knows, our time is valuable. And uh, so, Here's a, a simple little library that uh, you can use to easily help you cut releases without having to think too hard about things, and, and you get the change log generation for free. So standard version is, is what I would call an opinionated uh, uh, library because it, we, we expect you to use Angular commit conventions. Um, and uh, the it only makes changes to your project locally, right? So what that means is it's only touching your Git repository that you have cloned on your machine. It doesn't actually publish anything for you. It doesn't actually push anything for you. Um, and that's just so that uh, you can, uh, after you cut a release, you can verify things manually if you want to uh, before you publish them. Um, everything is good. If you're interested in a more, yet more automation, um, which I think is probably a good idea, you should definitely check out Semantic Release, which I know you've probably seen once or twice on up here uh, mentioned today. Um, and we have the 
the, the privilege of having uh, the author speaking here um, in a little bit. Um, so that's pretty cool. He'll be talking about something different. but So basically, that's it. Um, that was my lightning talk. I um, guess I'm good on time. So again, uh, have any questions, feel free to come and uh, ask. I'm excited to talk about this. You can find me on Twitter or on GitHub as Nextru, or you can uh, email me directly at andrew at npmjs.com. Thanks. <laughs>